Hey everyone, welcome back to another build log of the DIY Weissen lamp, where I try to recreate a Dyson task light using off-the-shelf and 3D printed components. In the last build log, I made progress on the motion system by designing a 3D printed counterweight to offset the weight of the horizontal arm so that when you position it, it stays in place. If you watched that last video, you'll remember that I was really happy with how minimal and discreet this solution was, but I was a little underwhelmed with the counterweight's performance, specifically the motion wasn't very smooth. So fixing this is going to be the subject of today's video. I know I said in the last video that this week I'd be getting into the lighting components, but it turns out that there's so much to cover today that I won't be getting to that. The good news with this is that it's because the changes that I'm making in this build log are really cool and pretty substantial. There's a bit of a theme in this video actually, where one solution to one problem enables a chain of other improvements and enhancements, which is always a really satisfying phenomenon. So in order to cover all of these changes, lighting talk will have to wait until a future video, and I'll dedicate a video just to that. Before I get started, I figure I should give you a before shot so we know what we're trying to fix. I don't know if you can hear this, but there's just this rubbing noise as this counterweight moves up and down the vertical rail, and that's what I'm going to try to eliminate. Let me turn the mic around so you can hear it. That noise is a pretty obvious problem that comes through on video. The other problem that doesn't really come through on video is that the cause of that noise, that rubbing, uh, also causes the motion to be pretty rough. Uh, so I can actually feel resistance as I move the vertical arm up and down. And that's not something that you feel uh, when you move it side to side. So these rollers provide a really smooth motion and I would really like to replicate that on the counterweight. When I think about how to achieve smooth motion, my mind immediately goes back to these V-slot wheels. I've been really impressed with just how smooth the motion is on this carriage, and it would be great if I could use something like these wheels on the counterweight if I can. A discreet and clever way to do this would be to mount the wheels to the counterweight so that they align to this interior channel. The wheels would be totally hidden inside of this channel, and the motion would also be super smooth. The constraint here is that the interior of this channel is really narrow. It's less than a quarter of an inch wide, so I need some pretty small bearings if I wanted this to work. Open Bills doesn't make a wheel that is nearly this small. And while I was able to find some tiny bearings that could be small enough to work, they're over $20 each, and I'm worried that the high cost would make this project less approachable for people. If I want to use wheels on this counterweight, I need a track to run them on, and I've just run out of track. Or have I? What if the vertical rail had two tracks? This is the 20mm by 40mm linear rail, also from Open Builds, and at double the width of our current 20mm by 20mm linear rail, it also provides double the tracks, which means that we could potentially have a dedicated track for the carriage and a dedicated track for the counterweight. I think it might be worth experimenting with this beefy rail. The only drawback I can come up with is that it's a little bulky and it is a departure from the Dyson light. I think I'm okay with that if it can help me achieve the perfectly smooth motion that I'm looking for, because that's a really important quality in this project. Plus, remember those cascading improvements I mentioned at the beginning of the video? They all stem from this. I'll point them out as they come up, but first, let me start with the main benefit of switching to this rail by adding some wheels to the counterweight. One thing I'm trying to do to keep the design language somewhat consistent is to use consistent values across parts wherever I can. So one example of that is here on the counterweight uh, where I have this thicker piece that connects to the belt. I'm keeping that the same thickness as the carriage, so those are both uh, six millimeters. 
Another place you can see that is wherever there are rounded corners. That's a six millimeter radius as well. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that there are a bunch of secondary enhancements that come from using the 20 by 40 millimeter rail. And I think now is a good time to go over those. The first one is the removal of these tabs. So with these tabs gone, I now have a flat surface that I can work with for this part. And when 3D printing, that's really important. I can put this flat surface face down on the print bed, and it means that I don't need any supports for this part. In the area around the belt clip, I needed support material to make this part printable, and that led to a surface that was marred and just inconsistent and pretty ugly. And you can see in the new part where I don't need support material how smooth and clean that part is now. So that's a huge improvement. I'm really happy with that. And there are no surfaces on this new part where uh, support materials were needed at all, so it's just a, a cleaner, better looking part. Other enhancements come from how I'm going to mount the counterweight to the rail. In the earlier version, I needed a piece like this at the top, which I called the pulley assembly, where the pulley mounts and transfers the belt from one side to the other. And when mounting this to the 20 by 20 rail, uh, I needed to use these little tabs to keep it from spinning around. Overall, it looks okay, but on this layer where it meets the aluminum rail, I'd really like this to be totally flat. And since it's built on top of support right here, it's never going to be totally flat. So what I'd prefer is for this edge right here to be printed directly on the build plate, which means that this would be completely flat. And with the new rail, that is possible. So I went ahead and designed an updated version of the pulley assembly for the 2040 rail, and it's pretty simple. It's just a doubled up version minus the tabs. So this is exactly what I want. Uh, it does the exact same job as the original pulley assembly, but these tabs are removed, which means the bottom surface is totally flush. It's printed in, in this orientation. So it's just an overall a much cleaner print, and when it's mounted, uh, it looks a lot cleaner too. These edges meet perfectly. And the same is true for the bottom of the rail where we have the base. That's where this aluminum spacer slots into, and this in turn slots into the desk mount. This also uses a couple of tabs, a slightly different style, but the same overall idea. And they have the same problem. This surface just ends up being a little bit uneven. And the solution is to remove those channels and use two screw holes. And now I have a perfectly flat bottom. This is a pretty simple redesign. I've just doubled up on the width of the base and the aluminum spacer just slots in. Those are pretty minor changes to the pulley assembly and the base, but they really add up. And I think they make the overall package look a lot more polished. I did have to double up on the number of pulleys in the pulley assembly, and ultimately I think that's fine and looks pretty cool. Actually, this new pulley assembly is now my favorite component just because it's so compact and has so much hardware packed into a little tiny 3D printed part. The only foreseeable downside for this new base is that it's now asymmetrical, but I actually kind of like this look, so it doesn't bother me too much. So with everything assembled, I can put it all together and see how it feels. Okay. Oh man, it's so much smoother than the old version. Uh, <laughs> I remember when I put on the version with the tabs, uh, as soon as I slid it on, I thought, oh man, this needs some work. But I feel totally differently with this one. It, it feels perfect. It's so much smoother. It feels just like the carriage. There's one small problem. The nylock nuts that hold the wheels on are actually colliding, but they're only just touching, so I'll fix it up pretty easily. I'll just make a small revision. The important part is that in the area where the wheels aren't colliding, it's very smooth. I think I have a simple solution for this collision problem. Right now I'm just using the standard nylock nut that comes in the Open Builds wheel kit, uh, and it is about uh, 4.9 millimeters thick. And really, I just need to shave off like a millimeter or so. I found these lower profile nylock nuts uh, that look like this. And these, uh, they look on the surface about the same, but actually they are uh, 4.46 millimeters, uh, around 4.5 on average. If I use one of these new nylock nuts on both the carriage and the counterweight, I'll save myself about a millimeter between these two, and I think that should give us enough clearance. So I'm gonna switch those out now. Here's the carriage and the counterweight with the new nylock nuts, looking pretty stealthy. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's see if it works. Uh, 
Oh, they just touch. These two are just touching. Let's see if I can tighten those down so that uh, we can avoid that. Even after tightening everything and dialing it all in, these two nuts still just graze each other as they pass, which is too much. I think what I need to do is go to the extreme and try out some of these guys, which are a super low profile nylock nut. Uh, these are actually, I think, made for drones uh, to hold the rotors on. And if this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to redesign the part altogether. Now I have the super low profile nut on the top and then just the standard lower profile nut mounted on the bottom. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, so that, you, you heard that hit, but that's actually just uh, on the backside where I haven't changed anything. Uh, so let's get past that. And then uh, there's still a little bit of rubbing right here. Let's see if the lower profile fixes it. Uh, looks like it does. So you can see they're just barely missing each other now. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, so now I have the super low profile nylock nuts on the counterweight. Uh, and I wanna show you this because now it works perfectly. Uh, it slides around, doesn't interfere. Uh, this feels really, really good. Uh, it actually, I don't even have the, uh, the weights in here yet, and it still already feels so much better than the previous version. I do think there's probably a redesign in order for these tabs just to pull the ends of the screws away from the carriage so that there's really no chance of them ever colliding. Uh, but for right now, I've solved the problem, so I'm going to come back to that and stay with this for now. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think the time invested into redesigning this counterweight is totally paying off. And that goal that was really bothering me that we weren't achieving before of smooth motion, I think has been totally addressed. It feels really good now. Um, the cost of achieving that smooth motion, I think is making the counterweight a little bit more conspicuous with these big wheels, but I actually have an idea for how to uh, address that as well. And it's something that I'd like some uh, opinions on actually. What's bothering me is that in the previous version, we just had this slim counterweight that aligned perfectly with the profile of the vertical rail and the lamp. And now we have these three wheels sticking out. Um, I think it's we've sacrificed a little bit of that discrete quality that made it look uh, really slim. And what I'm wondering is, is there a way to minimize these wheels so that they just don't stand out as much? Uh, right now, they are calling a lot of attention to themselves, even though functionally it's working really well. I can solve this problem just by using a smaller wheel. This is the wheel that I'm using right now. It's from Open Builds, and this is actually not the smallest one they make. They have a mini V-slot wheel as well, uh, which is very cute and very small. And here it is next to the original. The decision I'm weighing here is, is redesigning the entire counterweight worthwhile just so that I can use a set of these smaller wheels. Uh, looking back on the original goals for the counterweight and the motion system in general, I think it is. Uh, it's at least worth a try because I really want it to be uh, quiet, which it is, and smooth, which it is uh, now that we're using wheels, but we've lost some of that uh, discrete design that I was going for. So if this can help us get some of that back, I think it's worth trying. I'll save some time here and just reveal that I've already designed and printed this newer version that works with smaller wheels. Visually, the main difference is that these tabs are just smaller, and functionally, the difference is that the center point for all the wheels has been brought closer together so that when the smaller wheels are mounted, they still hug the aluminum rail. With everything assembled and the belt attached, I can put it on the lamp and see how it works. I'm not using the ultra low profile nylock nuts on these because they actually interfere with the wheels, so we'll have to see if these uh, hit the carriage. Okay, feels pretty smooth. Let's see if they hit. Uh, yeah, you can hear on the other side. Uh, so let's see. Oh yeah, they touch. I'm gonna have to switch these out for the ultra low profile. With that modification made, they don't hit at all. They're actually not even in danger of hitting because uh, with this combination of smaller wheels and low profile nylock nuts, they don't even overlap anymore. So they're never going to hit. So that's great. The question now is, how does it look? And I think there's two competing ideas at play here. One is uh, the smaller wheels definitely do make it more discreet. And I like that. 
Uh, they just don't stand out as much because they're smaller. On the other hand, because they're different from these wheels, that in their own way causes them to stand out more. Now we have two types of wheels mounted to the same thing. Um, and I think the fact that they're different makes it stand out. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of that. I think I need some time to think about which version I like more, the smaller wheels or the larger wheels. And uh, I'm curious what other people think too. Do you prefer it with these smaller wheels where it's more discreet but non-matchy? Or do you prefer the, the matchy version with large wheels everywhere? I'm curious about that. Between now and the next build log, I'm going to think about which one of these I prefer. On the one hand, I like the larger wheels and the consistency they provide with the carriage, as well as the smooth motion with the larger wheels. I definitely felt a difference with the larger wheels compared to the smaller ones. These just feel like they have a little bit more glide and more cushion and overall move more smoothly. On the other hand, I like how minimal and optimized this version is with the smaller wheels, the smaller tabs, and just making it blend in more in general. Um, I'm just not sure how successful it is at doing that. I'm actually a little bit surprised that I'm leaning towards the larger wheels, even though I went through the trouble of making the version with the smaller wheels, and I felt almost certain that this would be the one to go with. I'm leaning towards this a little bit, so I wouldn't be surprised if I went this way, but I'm curious what other people think. Which version do you think looks better? By the time the next build log rolls around, I'll hopefully have made a decision on which version I like more, which is good because I'm really eager to move on to the lighting components. This is a lamp after all. Let me know in the comments what you think about the wheel options and also the switch to the 20 by 40 vertical rail. I'm really interested to hear what folks think about that change. Until then, thanks a lot for watching. The next video is going to be really exciting and it's gonna be a pretty big shift from what I've been doing so far. So subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that. Thanks again, see you in the next one, bye. Thank you.